Hello, my name is uh, Gabriel Lodewijk. I'm president of Conveyor Experts BV and um, professor of transport and logistic technology at Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. I would like to talk about uh, brake design and why brakes are important on long overland and downhill systems, belt conveyor systems. Um, one of the important things with uh, the brake design is that you have to take all kinds of different aspects into consideration. The performance during a um, situation where a belt is loaded or where the belt is empty it makes quite a difference on what a brake has to do in case the belt has to stop. Also, weather conditions can be important, whether the belt is running in the middle of the winter or during the summer. Now, on most systems, when you don't know beforehand what kind of loading you have or what kind of weather conditions you face, it's good to have a system that it adjusts itself to a change in operational conditions, like for example, a proportional break. By using a proportional break, you can make sure that whatever the conditions are, you're always able to stop the system in the time that's specified. Another option uh, for a proportional uh, brake would be a brake which simply turns on and off. And by saying that, you basically have to size it for the worst case conditions. Now, sometimes that means that under other circumstances you're braking too hard. And by too hard, I mean you put too much torque into your system and too much tension into your belt. And if you do that wrong, at the end of the day, it means that the service life of your belt is seriously jeopardized and worst case scenario is you can break the belt during operation and that obviously is totally unacceptable. So after many projects we did uh, with clients worldwide uh, I've came to the conclusion that on large-scale systems like uh, major downhill systems, long overland systems with complex geometries like multiple curves, combined vertical and horizontal curves, I really think that you should have uh, systems, braking systems, that can be controlled, whether it's proportional or non-proportional, that's not so important, but in any circumstances it has to be controlled. One way to do that, for example, is to use the uh, Sobo system that Tremborg offers, which can be a good alternative to proportional braking systems. I'm Phil Staples, I'm Managing Director of Sea Kit South Africa, a company specializing in the design of big overland conveyors and pipe conveyors. We're increasingly finding that on the big conveying systems we have to use brakes either to control regenerative loads or possibly uh, feed from one conveyor onto the other. So therefore control braking is essential to be able to control the stopping time of a conveyor. We find that when braking is too hard on a conveying system you end up possibly failing a splice, damaging pulleys.
downhill conveyors, the control opening of the brake is as critical as the control closing of a brake. And therefore, a controlled system presently in India, we are developing the biggest downhill pipe conveying system in the world. It is going to regenerate around 800 kilowatts of power when it's operating normally. The stopping of this conveyor is critical. In the event of it failing to stop under its normal system of BFDs, the conveyor will run away and could cause amazing problems, major problems. So what we have decided to do that to control the stopping of this conveyor, we've introduced a tail Svenborg brake with a Sobor control system. This braking system will guarantee that there will be no overrun of the conveyor and controlled, simple, sensible stopping. Conveyor dynamics is a very big issue for us and hard to explain in just one sentence. So let me just uh, stress one big point for us, that means braking of a conveyor. When you design the brake of a conveyor, you must consider uh, the maximum needed torque to stop it. Because of uh, the load of the conveyor is changing all the time, you have to design it for the worst case. If you are talking about a conveyor line, means different conveyors one after another, then you have the problem that the loading changes along the conveyor line, so that each conveyor needs a different torque to get the same stopping time. If you don't do that, then you have the risk of overshooting in the transfer point. Because of the stopping time, uh, depending on the load of a conveyor, uh, changes with the load, uh, you need to synchronize uh, different conveyors. So uh, the normal approach is uh, to calculate time lags between the first conveyor to be stopped to the second conveyor and so on and so on. In normal condition, uh, this leads that uh, the stopping time is far too high. The better approach is uh, to stop all the conveyors at the same time if uh, the stopping command comes to them and they have to uh, break with adapted torque so that they stop at the same time. In the first approach you get the problem what uh, will you do if there's uh, power failure. Uh, when power, power failure arises then you um, get the maximum torque to each conveyor at the same time so that they stop at different times and you have always an overshooting at any transfer point. If you can arrange it in the better approach that even in power failure you get uh, the, for each conveyor the torque you need to bring it down to, at the same time then you can avoid these overshootings. This second more intelligent approach we have installed in the Grazweiler Lignat mine. The system comes from uh, Svendborg braking systems and the so-called Sobo system. And we made good experience with it. Of course you can realize the second approach also with frequency converters. And in fact we do in some, uh, in some conveyor lines like in, in the Hambach Lignat mine. Uh, the, the disadvantage of uh, this system is that it's, yeah, it doesn't work if you have a power failure situation. Whereas with a Sobo system you have also this advantage uh, while power failure uh, comes up. <laughs>